Hey friends, so last time in the previous video we skirted and scoured our fleece and so now I have some nice dry wool with me. It's been through the entire process of cleaning and we're going to do just a little bit more for preparation. So there's several ways that you can deal with your wool. First off, let's talk about combing. Now you can use a wide tooth comb. If you don't have access to some of the more expensive tools, um, you can use, I use a rosewood wide tooth comb sometimes, or this is an undercoat rake for um, dogs with thicker fur. And it's got nice widely spaced teeth. I don't know how well you can see how widely those teeth are spaced. So what we do is we take our lock and here's just a simple lock. And we're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna just start pulling the comb through the lock. And then, like your own hair when you're trying to work out tangles or you know knots or anything like that, you're just going to gently work from the bottom upwards. So we're not going to start at the top and pull it all the way down or else we're going to pull a bunch of fibers out at the same time. So we're going to go through and we're just going to gently tease. So if you saw how push together the lock is at the top and now how nice and spread out that is at the bottom. Once we get the entire lock combed, I'll just give it a couple of more real quick swipes here. Now we've got fibers aligned next to each other so that we can start pulling them out in a worsted fashion. Okay, so there's the first way to prepare. Another way to prepare is by using a little slicker brush and you can get these for really cheap at the dollar store or you can pick them up at um, pet supply stores, anything like that. You don't have to have expensive tools to do this. Now what we're going to be doing is this is called flicking your locks. So we're going to use the same principle as we did with the dog undercoat rake and we're just going to be lightly brushing through the lock and it'll also pull out some vegetable matter. If there's anything that's a little bit shorter like this, it'll pull that out as well. And so we're going to be just flicking this lock real quickly. So this is another method that you can use for a nice worsted spun yarn. All those fibers are lined up right in a row, right next to each other. Okay, so that's two methods to prepare. Now, if you can afford hand carters like these, these are great. These are from Ashford, they're fairly large. Now these ones you'll notice there's a curve in them. Now these carters are done, they're used for either cotton or wool. Often, typically what you'll find with uh, just regular wool carters is they're going to be flat, not curved like this. But with these, I can do both. So if you can't afford these, grab yourself two of these little slicker brushes and you can do exactly the same thing. It's going to take a little bit longer, but you'll be able to have the, the same effect. So. First off, what I do is I make sure I have my good bunch of wool here. I've got both my hand cards and I've labeled them with an L and an R on the back side of my cards. So if you look right here, there's an R and on this side in the corner, there's an L so that you're always operating them in left hand and right hand. Okay. That's that's kind of important. You want to operate them the same way every time. Not vitally important, but it's what was recommended to me. So the other thing I do is I always keep a towel in my lap, especially if I'm doing this indoors. If you're doing it outside, you don't have to worry about it so much, but if you keep a towel in your lap, that's gonna prevent all of that vegetable matter that you're getting out of your wool from falling to the floor and dirtying up your floor. You've got some place that you can collect it. Not only that, if you have extra fibers sitting in your lap, you can keep them sitting here while you're loading up your cards. So let's talk about how to do that. 
So we want to just take some pieces of the wool and we'll just rip a couple of locks out here. And what I'm going to do is just lay some in. Not too much. We don't want to get too carried away right off the bat. So we're going to just lay a couple of locks in here. All right. Maybe just a little bit more on this edge. Okay. So we have about that much in the carter. And what we're going to do is they're going to go handles opposite and we're going to run the teeth across each other in opposing directions. So all we do with carding, run them this way a couple of times, flip your cards over, use your left hand or, you know, whichever hand opposite the one you start with, run them the opposite direction, flip them again, do that a couple of times. Okay. Now we can see how spread out this is and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit more wool to fill up my carters just a little bit better. So let's load these up just a little bit more. And again, I'm going to place them into my, for me, my left hand carter. Just to kind of fill in the gaps on these carters. Okay, so I have a little bit more wool layered in there, and we're going to do the same process again. Give it a couple of swipes this way, flip it over, give it a couple of swipes this way. One more time on this side. Now, look at how evenly spaced those are and the vegetable matter is falling out onto my towel and there's a couple of sheep kids in here, no big deal. It's falling out onto the towel. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take and transfer these fibers over to this carter. And we're just gonna start from the bottom and just scrape all of that up so the teeth are, the teeth from this carter are pulling the fibers off this carter. Look at that, nice and clean, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this carter over again, and we're going to do it again. A couple little scrapes through here. Now, I don't have to transfer these fibers off. There's not much here, but I'm going to transfer off of this carter. Lay them all over onto this side like so and we're gonna scrape through a couple more times. This just ensures that you're getting all of that vegetable matter out of there, that you're aligning those fibers, that you're spreading out. If there's any lanolin left in the fiber, you're spreading it out evenly throughout all of the fibers. It's If you take a little bit of extra time while you're carding your wool, I guarantee you in the long run, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to spin. So like I said before, it's all about preparation of your fibers. So now we have them carted out a little bit equally. And what I'm going to do is now transfer the fibers off of this carter and watch how we do it. It's a little bit different. We're going to start with the very top edge and we're just going to scrape down. Now this carter is clean and look at that little roll at the top there. Okay. That's what we're shooting for. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the fibers off this carter by using the top edge of this carter. We're just gently going to scrape those out. See now that carter's clean and we have a little bit on the top edge here. So now you can either take like a rod or a dowel or a pencil and you can roll it all up. But if you look, see how neatly that's already rolled. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come from the top edge with my fingers and we're just gently going to go in the same direction as the teeth. 
and we're going to roll these fibers out of the teeth. And gently lift it off. And so now what we have is a roll egg and you can spin directly from this. It'll give you a very nice woolen spun. So if you remember, worsted spun is where all the fibers are aligned in the same direction. Now woolen spun is where they're kind of all curled around each other. So you'll see all of the fibers go this way, right? So now as you pull off the end, your fibers are going to be kind of lining up a little bit, but you see how fluffy that yarn is? It's going to be a nice woolen spun yarn. Very, very warm. And actually, this is really super easy to spin. So that's how we go from skirting, scouring, drying, then into combing, flicking, or carding to start spinning our wool. Now, some people do have drum carters. I do not at this time. I may get one eventually, but I really like this system. It's simple. It keeps my hands busy, and I just like to watch the finished product once it goes from that raw product all the way up to the roll legs where I can hook it onto my spindle and just get going. So, Next time, we will talk a little bit more about spinning and some of the principles behind that. We've already talked a little bit about working with a hooked stick, but we will get a little bit more in depth about spinning your yarn, probably on a drop spindle. Stay tuned, and we'll see you soon.